Hello, everybody. It's me. And uh, you might be wondering, why am I dressed like this? Well, it's because I want to talk about art today. I know, I know. So one of the things that I've missed more than anything is from touring right now is the ability to go to an art museum. We've been very fortunate to go to Europe and spend time over there. And it really, uh, really is hurting my heart right now that I can't go and go see art in the art museum. So today I thought, what the hell, I'll wear a beret and a turtleneck. I've never worn a turtleneck. And I'm uh, sipping some of this uh, sparkling grape juice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about art a little bit. So what I want to talk about today was, is so whenever I go to art museums, and I miss it dearly, I miss it so much. Um, one of the parts that I would always kind of miss was I would miss the... Um, the photography part. I knew, I knew, you know, my, I knew a lot of time periods of, of, you know, Renaissance and abstract expression and all that. But for some reason I would skip over the art photography part just because I didn't know much about it. So I, I, I was like, oh, well, you know, I want to learn. And so that's all, all, you know, I'm not a scholar by any stretch of the imagination, not at all. But, but, I do find it fascinating. I do love it, and it makes me very happy. So I, I actually had a good friend, still do, Jay Steele, who um, worked with him, and he, his wife is a teaches photography at a college up there in Tennessee, and he, she gave me some books. He gave me some books, and so I read them, and I really started kind of getting art photography. I still don't know how to operate a camera at all. Okay, so <laughs> I'm just just as an appreciator. But then, you know, we were doing our record, um, Young Sick Camellia, whoops, right here, Woo! And if you notice, you know, that's a picture of uh, a withered camellia, right? Um, and it's kind of done in this like uh, Caravaggio, maybe, you know, even like Rembrandt Dutch style where the lighting is coming obviously from the top, but it's also of, of a flower. So the person who did this was a guy named McNair Evans who is unbelievable he was an unbelievable photographer guggenheim fellow was introduced to him by jay and it was um it was amazing so so but he was like hey have you ever heard of carl blossfeld and i was like no i've never heard of carl blossfeld so then he introduced me and it was one of the most amazing things i had ever ever seen if you don't know who carl blossfeld is he has this I have a book here and has like, if you see, those are just absolutely beautiful. So they're basically up close photos of plants, right? And this is like, we're talking like late 1800s, 19, you know, early 1900s. Okay. So Carl was a, actually, uh, he was born in, what was it? Born in 1866, right? All right. So, born in Germany, and really he was a sculptor, and he was somebody who um, taught. He taught at the university there in Berlin, uh, or the I think it was the Royal Academy. Don't check me on that. But he was a teacher and a sculptor. But he loved botanical sculpting and and those kinds of things. And so, what he did, and what's crazy, is that these are actually you know actually these are like so basically they were he invented his own camera and he printed it on basically glass and the reason he did that is so that you could project um you could project to a class the images in here and they would sculpt them and and so on and so forth so it was a it was a it wasn't really intended to be art at all it was to make art with those with those slides that had the plants and their beautiful and you just see the structures in them and the contrast and you see the work that's inside of there it's just absolutely amazing so I mean, you see the light and the dark and it's just unbelievable and so it was kind of part of a movement so then he obviously you know someone sees these and goes 
you know, holy shit, like these are beautiful. These are works of art. And so I think in 1928, he was convinced to do a book, uh, which I think in German translates to art forms in nature. And he did this book, right? And it became this huge selling book, you know, huge selling book. And so with that being the case, you know, he became popular for photography, something that he didn't even really do, but he became that, you know, he, that's what he did. So I think that, um, I think that that's a really beautiful thing. Like, but he believed very much that nature holds all of these, um, art forms in it and 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 you 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 have to to experience good art you can experience in nature in your natural habitat it doesn't have to be you know some sort of make-believe thing we all find forms of art within nature and i think that's a beautiful thing right so it becomes usually popular part of a, a movement in germany called new object objectivity which also is uh, there's an artist in there named max beckman that I absolutely love, and hopefully one day I'll talk about that. But um, so anyway, anyway, I, um, I I think that what's really beautiful about this though is that something that no one was really, you know, he wasn't trying to, he was trying to teach with this as a tool. It was a tool for teaching, and it became one of the most popular. Uh, I think it's probably one of the most popular art photography books uh, out there. I know not long ago it was kind of voted as one of the top 100 for art photography. And it was something that I found fascinating. What I also found fascinating is obviously Germany is going through that time. And so he dies in 1932 and obviously Germany is going through, you know, horrible things at that point. And so he kind of disappears a little bit. His work disappears. And then there was a, a exhibit in 19 in the 1970s that he had a resurgence and i think probably every every modern art photographer out there probably is heavily influenced um by 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 carl's bloss felt so to me what that makes me always think about is hey you know when you make art don't do it for yourself you know don't do or do it for you do it for yourself. You know, when you make art, do it for yourself. Make sure that it's an expression of you and who you are. And, and hopefully people like it, but like we all the time, we make things and, you know, we're trying to please other people or try to, you know, like I deal with this, like you're trying to please an audience or something. But then it's like, I've come to realize if I make music and I make art that I love, you just hope that people like it because eventually, even if it's 30 years from now, you know, somebody might connect with it differently. And that's why you have to, you just have to do what feels right to you instead of, instead of feeling like you got to do it for other people. I know that's kind of simple and kind of whatever, but anyway, I thought that that was really fascinating. I love Carl Blasfeld. I think it's somebody, I think it's something that all of you should look at. I love y'all. Um, and if y'all like this, I'll do it again. If you don't, I'll never do it again. So <laughs> see y'all soon. We, hey, by the way, we do have an announcement uh, coming up. Um, it's not a new album, but it is, it is, uh, it is some good stuff. So pay attention this week, week and, uh, and we'll see y'all soon.